Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kim Barrett Show. I am your host, Kim Barrett, and today we are joined by the very lovely Ashley Ann. So if you've ever wanted to know how to grow on TikTok, if you ever wanted to really understand how you can tap into different social media strategies, uh, she's got to be the uh, the queen or king, King Ashley Ann, uh, of that. And I really found it was pretty insightful to get into the mind of someone who's been on all these social platforms for uh, probably equally as long, if not longer than me, uh, which is cool to find out someone who's gone into those depths. And of course, if we can help you go into the depths of your marketing, we've got our free Facebook community where we go live every single week. Uh, you can head over to www.joinmygroup.com.au where you'll get all that and more. And who knows now after this, you might even find me on TikTok. Uh, but until then, let's jump into the show. Ashley, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you making the time. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Great to have you. Now, I always like to start the podcast off the same way every time, which is if I met you at a party and we were chatting and I said to you, Ashley, what is it that you actually do? What's your go-to answer? The quick and dirty. Um, I'm one of the top social media strategists in the country and I help people make money with their social media accounts. Nice. I like it. That was very quick. You just thought back. Got it. I like it. I like it. People's attention spans are short. You got to be yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. That's why they call it an elevator pitch, right? You got like 10 seconds. You got to get it done. Uh, so, so tell me, how did you get into that? Because obviously, like, as you were growing up, you probably didn't think, hey, when I get older, I'm going to help people with their social media and, uh, <laughs> and, and using phones to make money. Like, you know, all these different things that are uh, have changed and evolved over, you know, the last few years. Like what, where did it all start for you? So I actually, um, my first company and how I made my first Millie and actually learned I was good at social media is an event design and production company. So I do high end, like really over the top, crazy events. Um, and I went to school, right. I, I bought into the dream, you know, you go to college and get a degree and, you know, you go get your corporate job and a house and a white picket fence. And anyway, the machine was broken. It was not working for me. When I graduated from college, I actually came out in a recession when that big housing bubble happened. So the job market was like really tough. I was literally watching people lose their houses and cars and stuff like that. And um, at the time I was working a corporate gig and I was doing like 60, 65 hours a week, realistically for someone else. And I was not happy. Like I was good at what I was doing. Um, and I was very responsible with my money, but the math wasn't math in my account. You know what I mean? And I, and I, I started paying attention to people that were living, you know, a life that I aspired to live. And I noticed a few things that they all had in common, which was, you know, lots of them owned their own businesses, even if it was just a side hustle, they all had something else going on over there. Um, like, 90% of them had real estate or there's some form of stocks of investments. And um, I noticed that a lot of them had an extremely high valuation on their time. And so I was like, I got to figure out how to do something that I like to do. And so uh, I was in my master's program. So I'm actually, you know, trained and I was doing all that stuff they teach you to do. And it just you know, it, it wasn't working for me. And I was like, you know what? I'm putting in all these hours. I'm doing all this work. I'm doing all this hustling. I don't even know if this is, you know, even gonna like run back and turn into something for me. I was like, I could really try and do my own thing. And um, inside of the master's program, this guy named Dr. Don Bradley, and we had to do this feasibility study. And we actually discovered that my idea for doing event design and production actually could become a profitable business. So like a crazy person, uh, <laughs> I decided not to renew my contract at my corporate gig. Um, and anyway, I prayed to God for a sign. I closed like $150,000 a wedding. So I was like, clearly that's a sign. Um, it's time for me to get out of here. And then I went and started doing the event design and production company, right? Now in the midst, I'm doing all this stuff that they teach you to do in master school. I'm billboards, I'm doing commercials, I'm on the radio, I'm doing all this trash and it is not working. Eventually one day I put a post on Facebook and it wasn't anything exciting that happened. I don't even think seven people like this post, okay? But something in me was like, put up another post. 
Um, I put up another one. Still not too much happened. The third one, I probably only got like 11 likes, but someone slid in my DM and they said, hey, I see you do, you know, events. Do you do birthday parties? And I was like, sure. And I asked her what the budget was. She was like $28,000, which was way more than anyone had paid me, you know, before. And I was like, girl, I'm already at the party. Where are you at? Um, so that's what really piqued my interest into social media, right? And um, I really got really good at like building up audiences and booking clients. And then um, a few years in, like, I don't know, this is maybe like, mm, I'm going to say seven to 10 years ago, somewhere in that range. Um, I'm doing my thing on social. People are inviting me to come to events with other event designers and producers and stuff like that and teach them how to build up their event business and use social media. Everybody keeps bringing me in for that. Well, anyway, somehow some guy is there um, supporting his wife and her event business. And he's like, hey, I don't do events, but the information you're given is actually really good. You should consider, you know, talking about this outside of there. So I, I didn't really pay it too much of a never none. And anyway, then I meet this lady later at the chamber. She has an art gallery. She's paying this business consultant like five grand a month. And I, at the time, I think it's stupid. Now I don't think it's stupid to have a business manager because, you know, everybody's not good at the business of business. They're good at their skill or their talent. You know what I'm saying? But not the business of business. And so anyway, um, long story long, we get to a point where she and I get very friendly and eventually she's calling me every day asking me stuff. And I'm just like, girl, I'm like, why are you calling me? You have a business coach. And she's like, well, everything you tell me works. And that's when I actually like... You know, I'm putting together what the guy told me and her. And so that's how I got into consulting. Then from there, we get into what everybody's on this Facebook scam. So back in the day, I don't know if you remember this. This, this is in that seven to 10 year range. They would do these things called worldwide campaigns. And basically they knew this is back in the day when Facebook was still called the power editor. I, like, <laughs> I don't know if I'm like aging myself, but <laughs> like, <laughs> I remember, don't worry, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. So that was, so it was, it was overwhelming, right? It was crazy in that thing. You literally had to, it was like learning a new language and they knew people didn't understand it. People didn't understand the grid and stuff. And they would come in and they would charge these small business owners thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Say, we're going to run your marketing. You know, we're going to get people to your gym or to your restaurant or whatever. And they were running these worldwide campaigns. And for those of you that are listening that don't know what a worldwide campaign is, basically they would buy like the cheapest traffic. Okay. And in, um, in digital marketing land, different traffic is in tiers. So if you're like in, you know, Canada, if you're in London, uh, Australia, you're in the States, that's more expensive traffic. But if you're um, like, I don't know, in Cambodia, in the Philippines, and maybe, um, you know what I'm saying, somewhere like that, well, that traffic has a very, very low price point. And these are people, they're not in your country. They're not in your city. They, they might they're like coming to your gym. <laughs> they're, they're never coming to your gym. But the, the business owner had no idea. So this person charges you like $5,000 a month now to run your Facebook ads. And they're like, well, look, you know what I'm saying? 10,000 people saw your post and, you know, we got 20,000 people to like this guy, you know, bench pressing or whatever in there. And like, you're feeling like trash and they're like, your product is bad. Like, it, it's not us. Like, look at all these people that are seeing it. No one wants to come. So the business owner is feeling terrible. They're like, oh my God, I suck. You know what I mean? All these people are seeing my stuff. I'm not getting traffic. Well, those people are never going to come. They didn't live there. And most people uh, did not have the understanding on how the power editor worked, how to read it, the reports, what the numbers were telling them. They didn't even know how to get in there and see where the traffic was coming from. And these people took advantage of it. So long story long, one day I get on the internet and I say, I'm going to teach for free because every day I'm hearing some horror story about somebody getting ripped off, right? And so I get online and I start what I call the late night business show. And I'm just teaching what I know for free. I'm like, I just don't want y'all to get hustled. I understand you may not be able to afford me to come in, but I'll show you how to do this. And if you are hiring somebody, what you should be looking for. And who knew that it was going to take off the way that it did? God was like, boom, like, here you go. And then, so long story long, that's how I got into social media strategy. <laughs> Love that. You, you got you got into it just by, first of all, being a good human and looking out for other people, which I love. 
Uh, because yeah, back in those days, it was like the wild west. Like cause we, we mm-hmm. specialize in Facebook ads and Instagram ads, and we we've, we've been doing it for a while. And it was like you saw what some people were doing for other people for ads because some of the traffic was so cheap. Like even the tier one traffic in in Australia, and you know, going back seven ten years, that traffic was cheap enough anyway. But mm-hmm. just because those people didn't know or care enough to do a good job for them, as you say, like there was there was so many times where. Uh, where people would get ripped off. And then the worst part is then they go, well, social media doesn't work. Yeah. Which is the, and it's like, I feel like it's still some, there's still some businesses today where they're like, oh, look, you know, ages ago I did something and it didn't work. So it's just not for me. And it's like, well, you probably just didn't have the right support. You probably didn't have an Ashley in your corner to actually help you and make sure that you were doing the right stuff. Yeah. And it's really crazy because they're doing themselves a disservice. Like 75 percent of consumers like actually admit, especially if they're millennial or Gen Z, um, they actually admit that they are going over to social media pages um, way before they are calling, before they're Googling, before they're emailing, like checking out businesses and looking for stuff. And I even do it all the time. Like I was looking um, for I don't know, I think I need somebody to like I was looking for a cobbler or something like that. I had some shoes I wanted to get repaired. And I immediately, you know, I hop on and I'm looking for like cobblers in Arkansas, trying to find somebody that I can send these shoes to. And people don't also, they don't realize that, you know, social media sites send more traffic to websites and landing pages than Google does. And so it's really like you're doing yourself a disservice if you're a small business owner and you don't have some type of social media presence. Yeah, hundred percent, wholeheartedly agree. And how have you noticed? And obviously, being that you know you you were probably around, like well, you were around in the rise of like Snapchat coming through, TikTok coming yeah. through, or, which we were talking about just before we started. Like, how have you seen the changes in in people and how they interact on these new platforms that came along as well? So, my favorite thing about Snapchat and TikTok is I feel like they make social media more accessible for everyone like instagram was really interesting and facebook it was very much about like your image and your persona and things are like really curated you know what i mean you had all these people putting out all these like super like high quality images and editorial layouts and i think it was like so intimidating to people and it was almost if it wasn't picture perfect, you know what I'm saying? Or if it didn't look like it was a highly produced video with a lot of skill, people rejected it. And Snapchat and TikTok are the opposite. People are like, get that crap out of here. We want to know who the real person is. We want to know, you know, the person behind the brand. We want to see real results. And they don't want things to be picture perfect. Actually, those types of things actually really plummet (laughs) um, over there. And I see a lot of people trying to take that model from like Instagram and put it over into like a TikTok or Snapchat and they flop. But just being your authentic self, you know, and sharing your opinion or your work or the behind the scenes and this is what it is, it's winning. And so I love that because people don't have to really stress out anymore about trying to create this like perfect content. You know what I'm saying? It's like, nah, just get up. If you, if you, cook hamburgers and french fries in your food truck well god dang it you get up in the morning and say yeah i got a food truck and i'm gonna i'm gonna record it while i'm prepping you know what i'm saying and you come down here to this corner and get you some fries and burgers for me today you know what i mean like it's that simple and uh so you're telling me that you don't have to do all crazy dances on tiktok like everyone thinks that you nah. have to go in there and uh, <laughs> you know like be pointing and doing all the dances no it's different. Nah, like so, <laughs> like so. When I started, because uh, I like to figure out different social media platforms, right? That's my job, and um, so I'm really excited because I finally got TikTok figured out. You know, we were able to grow. Um, I have a couple clients that are like half a million. We're able to do that in like a few months, and then on my page now, we're up to sixty thousand followers, and I've been able to do that in pretty much about three months. So super excited! I'm like, okay, I got it figured out. But when I started off, I was doing all those crazy dances and all that stuff too, and weird transitions. And I was like, I was like, oh, I was like, this this is gonna take forever. You are right, trying to edit it. And one day I was like, well, I don't want to do it. And I'm just going to get on here and I'm going to give a tip. And I was sitting, I was at the gas station, sitting in my car. And this video literally like picks up 300,000 views, picks me up like, you know, like 10,000 followers in like two days. And I was like, oh, 
I was like, they just want, want you to be yourself. Like, yeah, people are entertained by the dances and stuff, but you don't have to do it. There, there's a girl that I follow and she, you know, I don't even know what she looks like. She has all these followers and all of us just watch her clean stuff. That's all we do. We just watch this chick clean stuff. Like she cleans toilets, she cleans sinks, she cleans windows, she's cleaning the refrigerator. We just watch her clean and organize stuff. I'm not really sure why it's so satisfying. And then she comes on and she gives us tips, right? And she she links stuff to her Amazon store and we go buy it. Like, <laughs> so I like you don't have to do all of that. And there are literally so many accounts on TikTok of people just doing regular stuff like grilling, you know, <laughs> like lots of cooking, people talking about, you know, I don't know, conspiracy theories, people talking about space, people talking about they, you know, like their parents, their spouses, jokes about their kids, you know, there's a whole side of TikTok. All these people do is make fabulous coffee. I don't even drink coffee, but I find myself watching coffee talk. Um, <laughs> so so I, I, I like that you can just be like, this is what I'm into. And I just want to share it with you, you know, and, and, and people really seem to gravitate towards that. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's cool. And I think that's uh, important for people to remember is that just because uh, a platform appears a certain way, doesn't mean that you have to, that's the only way that you can use it. Right. It's like, just cause you think Absolutely. that you see that there's lots of people, you know, dancing or using certain music or whatever, you don't have to uh, go down that Avenue. And What's uh, what are you seeing now? Obviously, being like where when we're recording this is like halfway through 2022. What's um what sort of trends are you noticing on social media? Is there anything that people should be thinking about um for the rest of this year that you're you're seeing kind of pop up? Yeah, um, the first one having some type of introductory funnel is always going to be a win. I think a lot of people, when they get on social media, they forget they have to give a call to action. You know, me viewing your content, I'm not inside of your brain. I don't really know what you intended for me to do unless you tell me. Um, and so I'm noticing people that have very direct call to actions and they're putting a call to action on every post is a win. And that call to action doesn't always have to be by something. I think when I say call to action, people just think like, oh, you got to always be salesy. No, like literally just getting people used to engaging with you. Say good morning to me, download my podcast. What are your opinions? Check, you know, check this out. Just literally constantly always having a call to action um, to push someone towards either, you know, your list or to go over and purchase something. Um, and I've noticed people having a lot of success with that. Um, the second thing, I feel like authenticity is back. I'll be honest, um, you know, I've been on all of these platforms for a long time. And there was a point in time, Instagram was like a lot of fun. You know what I'm saying? There was a point in time, Facebook was a lot of fun. <laughs> and then they came through with all these rules and regulations and suppressing, you know what I'm saying? Like organic reach and trying to push people over more towards the ads and crack down on like sponsored posts and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, oh, like, I, y'all, I've had like, yo, like, I don't know, like nine. So I recently hit a million followers on Instagram. And I guess when you hit a million, like the rules change. So I've had like nine of my videos that I've had to appeal like back from in between 2017 and 18 because of the music clips that were, because of music clips that were on. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I mean. it's not fun anymore. You know, back in the day, you post the video, if it was music on in the background, it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like you and your people could vibe out. Not so much, right? It's really strict. It's really structured. You know, you got to go through and add in like, this is paid promotion with whoever. And so I definitely think trending, moving back over towards TikTok and Snapchat, they're more fun. People just like being there. Um, and it's really important that even if your account isn't as big on that, like let's say, for example, TikTok. So I, I have a little over 60,000 followers on TikTok. I have a million followers on Instagram. If I go live on TikTok, I'm going to have more people in my live stream on TikTok than I am in Instagram because there's more active users on TikTok. People like the platform. And that's really important for people to remember moving forward. Um, also the trend of posting multiple times a day. So that way you're not falling into, um, into like the algorithm of this, <laughs> I guess is what I call it for a lack of better words. Um, it, you can't get away anymore with just one time a day. 
like not even on YouTube. People I'm seeing accounts that are growing like really quickly with targeted audience members. They are like going at it like three, four times a day. Um, so responding to your comments and putting up multiple posts. Um, also, I think another big trend that I'm seeing in the social side is really, you know, getting back to showing the behind the scenes. If you're a small business owner, um, really just showing kind of like the stuff that you think that people wouldn't be interested in. People are literally interested in watching y'all wash dishes after dinner service because they're like, oh, they're clean. You know what I'm saying? People are really interested in watching you, you know, unload your produce truck. You know what I'm saying? And then send the finished result on a plate. People are really interested in you, you know, unboxing your boutique or you getting online with them, you know, and talking to them while you're editing someone's book or whatever it is that you do. People are just genuinely interested in understanding the process um, and being informed. And I'm definitely noticing a swing back into let's inform. Um, I always tell people on social media, it goes attention, interest, invitation, right? And the invitation could be an invitation to follow, an invitation to click my link, right? An invitation to download my podcast, whatever. But it's always attention. They're going to see your posts and, you know, you got what about 1.3 seconds to catch someone's attention. From there, they're going to listen to you for a few seconds and decide if they're interested in the content. And if they're interested, hopefully they're going to listen through to the end and you're going to give them an invitation. So I always tell people just follow that formula and you're good to go. Nice. I like that. And if you were to, if someone was starting out and they didn't have any social platforms, where would you recommend like being 2022? Where, what would be the first platform you would recommend them to jump on? TikTok. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. I just thought TikTok, I would check. It's, it's, it's easy, man. It's kind of like how Facebook was like the wild, wild west back in the day. You actually have a really strong chance to grow. Um, and it's very communal over there. And the, the, principle of reciprocity is very real. So if you're commenting and you're responding and you're liking other people's posts, you're going to get a lot of that in return. Um, and I've noticed that the audience on TikTok, they're like really excited to make friends. They, you know what I mean? If they see a product and they think it's a dope product, they are going to buy and they convert way faster. Um, I feel like on Facebook and Instagram, you're looking at anywhere in between a 14 to 45 day window, maybe to convert someone because they still need to see something that traditional seven to 14 times just to get comfortable with it. Compared to on TikTok, it's looking like conversions are happening in about anywhere from three to seven days. This is night and day. Yeah. It's night and night and day. And so literally, if you're showing up as your authentic self and again, you're showing the behind the scenes or how it works or you packaging it up, people are just like, oh, my God, that looks so cool. I want one. How do I get it? I'll go click the link and buy it. Right. Even if you even if you are like a consultant or you have like digital products, um, you literally can. I've done it before. I just put a link in my bio and say, hey, y'all, I'm going into Zoom and I'm teaching this. And if you want to come over, Poppy, and all of a sudden we got three, four hundred people in there and I make my offer and I'm leaving with fifty, sixty thousand dollars in a night. So it's it's really incredible to see that if you take the time to talk with people and inform them over there and build a relationship that is so easy to win. And then um, if people really, really like you on TikTok, then they're going to follow you to another platform. So hopefully you put them on your list first. And then the second social media platform, I would say is YouTube because it's the greatest, it's longstanding, it's proven the test of time. And I think people get discouraged because they get on YouTube trying to build these huge amass followings. It's not really about that. It's about people that really want to be connected to you and enjoy long form content and being able to create that for them. And I've also noticed when people go live on TikTok, like they have very active audiences and huge amounts of their followings actually show up to the live streams. I can't really say the same thing for like Facebook or Instagram. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I've, I've seen similar, it's like my numbers on Instagram is uh, terrible in comparison, but um yeah, some of those <clears throat> other platforms where you've got those warmer audiences um, who are more active, as you say, then yeah, I mean, there's a huge difference. Yeah. Now, actually, as we get towards the end of our time here together, I always like to ask the same question as well at the end of every podcast, which is what's a question which I didn't ask you that I should have? Um, what mistakes are people making that's stopping them from making money <laughs> on social? Fill us in, please. Uh, number one, 
having this belief that you have to be popular to make money online, not true. I would tell people prosperity over popularity. I have clients who literally have 500 followers and they're making in between five and $10,000 a month. So it's not about the quantity. It's all about the quality. You really want to get in there and find you a good target audience. It's going to be one to three different niches of people. And you want to talk specifically to them. Um, it's about their needs. It's about what they want to know. It's about their questions. It's about their desires. And that is it. And like, you know, essentially no one else matters because when you try and sell to everyone, you sell to no one. Um, the second thing, you got to make an offer every day. That doesn't mean that you have to be salesy, but if you set up your funnel where maybe, you know, you offer the free lead magnet on the front end. And as soon as they opt in, maybe there's a little video and you're offering them something like a lower tier product or a tripwire um, or a coupon, you know, an incentive for them to go and shop or come to your store. You're always going to win and you're going to find that you're making sales. And the third thing you have to list build for your life. Social media platforms are honestly just a meeting place. They're a meeting ground. That's it. It's like going to a party. And, you know, my goal is to get the number. I want you to take me out on a date. I want us to go together. I want to have the ability to text you and email you and learn more about you and what you need, right? And be able to give you specific offers based on what you need. Um, and then the fourth thing I would say is segmentation, right? Because if we can do a good job segmenting, well, then it's going to be super easy to make you an offer that you're going to find value in and you'll purchase it. Because if I know that you're interested in building your TikTok, well, you don't care about my emails talking about Facebook ads because you care about TikTok. So if I know you're interested in TikTok and I did a good job segmenting that at the top, I'm only going to send you emails about TikTok because I know that's what you want from me. And I'm only going to send you product offers about TikTok because I know that's what you want from me. Yeah, I think that's so important. They're definitely... Yeah, uh, if everyone just did that, that would be having so much more success on uh, I, <laughs> on social. But, then, but look, but then we wouldn't be employed. So yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> good point. Good point. Now, for uh, for anyone that's been listening um, to you, Ashley, and they want to, they want to know more about what you're up to. Where's the best place for them to connect with you online? Ah. Um, King Ashley Ann on all social media platforms. And I'm sure you guys can tell from this conversation, I hang out on Instagram and TikTok mostly. Um, you can definitely find some stuff on YouTube. If you come to my Facebook page, Full Transparency, it's never me. I haven't been on my Facebook page for years. It's always someone on my team because Facebook is like my least favorite out of all the social media platforms. Uh, <laughs> but if you want to, if you want to holler at me, pull up on me, especially on the gram, send me a DM. And I may take me a few days to answer you because I got a lot of people DMing me, but I will actually get back to you. Awesome. So guys, wherever you are watching this, listening to this, um, make sure that we'll have those links in the show notes above or below. And if you know anyone that maybe they've been struggling with coming up with a strategy online or they don't know where to start when it comes to social online, make sure that you share this episode with them so they can get some of Ashley's wisdom into their ears. Uh, Ashley, again, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much. Oh, I got one other thing. I don't know if there's any, it. but I'm going to send you a link and we can stick it in the show notes because mm -hmm. um, I'm working on the website. I don't know what I want to be, but on Sundays, once a month, I do a free training. Um, and I really break down like the map to monetization on social media. Now, this is a super intense training and I'm actually there. I do it live. Um, and we'll be there literally anywhere from three to five hours because at the end I do a Q&A and I try and answer everyone's questions. So I'll send a link. And if anybody wants to like pull up, pull up, come and get the info. I do like a full, like very intensive breakdown on what you need, the systems, how they work, you know, value-based content, how to attract that audience and how to convert them. Um, and there's no way I can teach it in like an hour. So, I mean, just be prepared to give me like half your day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easy. That, that sounds, that sounds amazing. So guys, wherever you are, as they hit the show notes, we'll make sure that that link is in there so that you can check that out. Um, again, Ashley, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. My pleasure.